Hey there, welcome back to That 70s Card Show. I'm your host, John Keating, and I thank you for joining me as I take a look back at the cards and the culture of the very colorful 1970s. We'll revisit a more simple time in our hobby by taking a deep dive into the sets and the stats with a generous amount of dad facts sprinkled in. That 70s Card Show is currently sponsored by Nobody. If you have a comment or suggestion, I urge you to... Drop me a line at that70scardshow at gmail.com. Uh, you can reach out to me at uh, 70s Card on Twitter. And, uh, of course, uh, right here on uh, YouTube, if you're watching at That 70s Card Show, head over to YouTube. If you aren't watching, you can drop me a line and uh, perhaps a line of criticism and whatnot. This is episode 45 on this journey and we're going to talk about the 1972 Sunoco NFL football stamp issue. So before we dig into that, we'll talk a little bit about the week that was, uh, of course, uh, as your de designated hoster, I have been around the world as Crosby, Stills and Nash once said, uh, finally kind of settling in. I'm in New York right now, so uh, I, I don't think I'm settling in really, but I'm closer to home and I'm not on an airplane every other day like I have been for the last several weeks. Uh, I will tell you that in Orlando last Friday, I was able to um, knock out 33% of my 1972 top set. I'm down to, I think, 20 cards at this point. So uh, there's a card shop that I went to on the OBT, as the locals say, the Orange Blossom Trail that I had last been to in the late 90s. Same guy running it. The place is awesome. I thought it was cool in the late 90s, but it's even more awesome now. Uh, so I uh, knocked out those high number cards. I got them for probably around, uh, again, the, the the lowest card I needed was, I think, card number 660 or so. So uh, anyway, up above there, they, those those guys start to run 15 bucks, 20 bucks for team cards such and such. So I probably paid a little less than half for uh, the going rate on all those cards, which was awesome. Also uh, knocked out some 79s. Yes, I have the 79 set complete, but kind of going back and looking at the uh, – it's a bittersweet thing because I'm – I'm looking at the cards that I have, the checklists, the team checklist and the big pink checklist and, uh, that I had marked out with a pen. So I'm kind of going back and replacing them. Again, a little bittersweet. I like how 11-year-old uh, Johnny used to check off his uh, stuff. And uh, the cool thing about 79, it was the last year probably that that was done by me because at that point um, the first uh, Beckett – guidebook came out and I negated the need to mark up my cards. I could mark up that book real fine with the pen. So that's that. Um, bought a box of 2022 Tops Heritage, which is of course an homage to the 73 Tops set, a beautiful set that I love. And uh, I vividly remember flipping those cards. It was so easy to flip cards. And when I say flip cards, I mean flip them over and challenge your friend uh, sibling or whatnot. Uh, it was so easy because the, when we needed positions, the positions were clearly marked on there with a little icon. That you could tell the pitchers from the uh, other positions, catchers, all that stuff, outfielders. So anyway, a lot of fond memories of that 73 set. Uh, what I will say, and I've, I've done this a couple times now with this heritage, I will say that uh, Topps seems to get it right with their collation uh, I did not have one out of a whole hobby box. I did not have one uh, duplicate card in that whole John. So kudos to Tops for uh, getting that together. Um, really appreciate that. I got the Reggie Jackson poster box top thing, which was pretty cool. I got a Miguel Cabrero refractor, and I got a Clayton Kershaw piece of his – um, socks or jock strap or t-shirt or game worn something something so anyway I'm not really in it for that it was it was it's neat seeing the old uh, design with newer players even though I don't know most of these guys so anyway that's that hobby box done maybe I'll get some more down the road we'll see about that um, yeah so here we are in New York City uh, this this uh, this show in particular 
Um, this show in particular was uh, suggested by uh, Mark Zenkovich, uh, obviously a St. Louis Cardinals fan. He wrote back to me in uh, February there uh, after I had done the uh, 72 top football set, which is a little bit of a beast on its own. He wrote back to me and he said, uh, I am enjoying collecting the 72 Sunoco football stamps. If you feel like covering them sometime in the future, I like the fact that there are many lesser known names shown, including the linemen. So that's uh, obviously Mark Z- Zenkovich. Uh, it was a brilliant suggestion. It took me a while to get my act together to knock this out. And before I go any further, I apologize if there's any extraneous noise. I'm in a hotel with um, near a fire station and fans blowing. There's an ice machine, all that stuff. So it's it's like being at a uh, an Italian wedding right now in my room. But we're all good, so I'm going to keep pressing on. Anyway, uh, again, Mark Zenkovich, thank you so much because this is a pretty cool little set and and. You can say it's not cardboard, uh, and that's fine. I don't care, but it's it's uh, it's it, it is really cool because you'll find out here in a minute. It kind of first of all was the biggest football set ever at its uh, at its release, and the way it was released was uh, pretty cool as well because it was really uh, in its spirit. It was a true giveaway, and um, you know, trying to drive traffic into the Sunoco stores. So it was uh, part of the journey and not supposed to be the destination. So anyway, the 72 uh, Sunoco football stamps. Uh, So let's go back in time here, okay? It's 2022 right now. We're paying over $4 a gallon in gas. We like our big cars still. But back in the day, um, uh, it, it... the average price of gasoline in 1972 was 31 cents a gallon. The cars were bigger. They just burned that gasoline like it was uh, going out of style. Um, and you could go to your Sunoco station or HX, which I think is a Midwestern, uh, was a Midwestern brand that merged with Sunoco or was bought out by Sunoco. And you can go in there, roll up there, and get some uh, free, free, I say NFL action, 1972 player stamps. Uh, on YouTube, I brought up uh, a fine example of our uh, legendary coach, Don Shula. I love his steakhouses, and uh, here's Don in front of a Sunoco pump. Now, if you are as old as I am, you remember these pumps. Uh, again, 31 cents a gallon, and guess what? There was a time uh, into my adulthood where these pumps were still around, and gas had crossed over the one dollar a gallon threshold but none of the pumps could handle that the pumps were double the only two digit uh pumps for the price per gallon right so that meant uh they essentially went by your readout was essentially half of what you actually ended up paying so uh if you had to pay if gas was a dollar ten a gallon the pump would read out 55 cents a gallon, you put in 10 gallons, that's $5.50. You'd have to do some quick math at your pump and realize you actually owed $11 for gasoline. So anyway, that's a little nostalgia trip for those who do or don't remember that the gas pumps couldn't keep up with the price of gasoline. So uh, there was a time when we actually had to do math at the gas pump. Um, and hey, that, that gas had some lead in it. So we were uh, we were not afraid of anything. Uh, you talk about people are people with gluten now. Hey, we had uh, lead in our gas, so um, it was a really really fun time to be alive. Uh, so yeah, so that's it. You could roll into your Sunoco station. They give you the stamps. There's uh, uh, stories of people walking by gas stations to and from school every day, and uh, the gas station attendant would throw you a pack of stamps. And away you go. These are the packs, by the way. Uh, I'm going to bring them up on the old screen. Uh, there's four cover books for these. Uh, there's uh, Eagles, Cowboys, Jets, and Dolphins. Of course, the jo- Dolphins were at the peak of their um, the height of their brilliance in 1972. Uh, the Eagles uh, were at the opposite end. The Cowboys were right right there, and the Jets were, you know, 
kind of in the lower half like the Eagles. But the Eagles had the best helmets back then, white helmets with the green wings. Hopefully they go back to that someday. So uh, there's your booklets. Your booklets were um, uh, nine, stamp, nine stamps per booklet. Uh, these things were made by NSI Marketing Limited. For Sunoco, I tried to do a little research on old NSI. Couldn't find out anything. It led me down a road to Canada Dry Ginger Ale. I don't know if that was the same company or not, but uh, it was an interesting story I read about Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Probably had nothing to do with um, football stamps. There were 626 cards in this base set, and there was an update set released later on, 82 uh, stamps in that. Uh, nine stamp booklets, like I said, uh, they you could receive them or you could send away for them, but I'll get I'll get away I'll get to that later on. No factory set, obviously. Uh, there was one series as, lo- as well as an update series. Uh, the size of these bad boys were one and five eighths by two and three eighths inches. Um, yeah, so, uh, they came, uh, in these little booklets and then you could, uh, get another 128 page book and there was, uh, a smaller book, I think a 56 page book as well that you just lick these bad boys and slap them in the book. I'm going to read something from inside the actual stamp booklet here. It says, uh, the NFL Action 1972 Stamp Saver album and Deluxe Saver album are excellent ways to save and protect your valuable stamp collection for the 1972 season. The 128-page Deluxe album, the official word and picture album, is truly a collector's item. It contains illustrations, stories, historical data, and stamp areas for 624 players of the 26 NFL teams, plus... 144 free player stamps. The 50 pick, the 56 page saver album features stamp area pages for each of the 26 NFL teams and all 624 players plus 144 free player action stamps. So visit your participating Sunoco or DX dealer today and obtain the saver album of your choice. Uh, it says in here, as you can clearly now, your ears clearly told you that there was 144 uh, stamps included in either one of these books. Uh, they were the same uh, sets of stamps, whether you got the deluxe album or the saver album. Um, you can still buy these albums out there. You can buy them with, with the stamps in them or without them, obviously. I think uh, the, the, the big boy, the, the deluxe album, runs you about 15 bucks right now if you wanted some of that. You could get a little wallet, a uh, trader wallet that you could throw your stamps in. Uh, I don't know. know, I guess it's kind of a neat thing back in 1972 to protect your, um, your assets or your future valuable assets, because we, uh, certainly didn't have that luxury for baseball cards and football cards. Tops didn't really offer the little foot lockers till later on, I think, or maybe they offered them in 72, but either way, we, you know, we didn't have a, a cool wallet there. Now the wallet, uh, fit stamps, uh, has the Sunoco logo, the DX logo, the NFL logo, and clearly says it's a bifolding wallet that says trader wallet on it. So that was a pretty cool little item made out of rubber. I'm sure uh, a lot of those ended up in the landfill. Uh, I'll show a picture of the stamp case. Um, there was 2000 player packets of nine in each one of these cases. Now, if you're Bad at math, you can probably still figure out that 2,000 times 9 is 18,000 of these bad boys in one piece of cardboard. Um, a couple more things about these these cards here. Uh, I'm going to read you some stuff from uh, a couple publications. Okay, uh, well, The first one we're going to do is from Beckett, who I refer to Beckett a lot, the Beckett OPG. Uh, often uh, I'm a subscriber unabashed subscriber. It helps me organize my uh, collection. I am not an endorsee, a paid endorsee. I do it all for free. So from the Beckett uh, description, it's pretty uh, extensive description. Uh, Beckett usually doesn't get this involved, but uh, I guess they felt the need to, to slap some words around and to try to describe this thing. And um, I'm going to put my glasses on if you guys don't mind. So, from the Beckett OPG description, it says, In 1972, the Sun Oil Company issued a stamp set of two types of albums. Each stamp measures approximately 1 and 5 eighths by 2 and 3 eighths, whereas the albums are approximately 10 and 3 eighths by 10 and 15 sixteenths. 
The logo on the cover of the 56-page stamp album indicates NFL Action 1972. The other deluxe album contains 128 pages. Each team was represented with 12 offensive and 12 defensive player stamps. There are a total of 624 numbered stamps in the set. Unnumbered stamps, he says, uh, in the set. And uh, I knew that. Why did I mess that up? Anyway, which made this stamp set the largest football set to date at, at, at that time. The albums indicate where each stamp is to be placed. The square for each player's stamp was marked by the player's number, name, position, height, weight, age, and college attended. Now, keep in mind, folks, this is the booklet where this stuff is marked, not on the actual stamp, on the booklet. Um, when the album was issued, the back of the book included perforated sheets of stamps comprising more than one fourth of the set. Again, that is the uh, 144 sets that we, 144 stamps that's included that we spoke about earlier. The album also had sheets of tabs, which were to be used for putting stamps in the books rather than licking the entire stamp. Each week of the promotion, a purchase of gasoline yielded an additional nine-player perforated stamp sheet. The stamps and the album positions are numbered, so the stamps are ordered and numbered according to the team order in which they appear in the book. The team order is alphabetical. Since the same 144 stamps were included as an insert with each album, these 144 stamps are easier to find and are marked as DPs uh, in the Beckett OPG. The stamp set is considered in very good condition at best when glued in the album. There are a number of players appearing in the set uh, in or prior or before their rookie card year. Uh, Lyle Alzado, Mel Blunt, Harold Carmichael, Dan Deardorff, Elsie Greenwood, Jack Ham, Cliff Harris, Ted Hendricks, Charlie Joyner, Bob Kuchenberg, Larry Little, Archie Manning, Ray Perkins, Jim Plunkett, John Riggins, Art Shell, Steve Spurrier, Roger Staubach, Gene Upshaw, Jeff Van Oat, and Jack Youngblood. Uh, and in the update set, it says here, there are a number of players appearing in this set before their rookie card year, such as Cliff Branch, Jim Langer, and Bobby Moore, who obviously changed his name to Ahmad Rashad. So let's unpack this for a second, as they say. Um... Let's see here. Uh, the stamps, again, are unnumbered, right? Um, and there's that 144 set uh, that comes with a book that I guess was also printed in equal number with the other ones, but also more so, more so with the books. So they're considered double prints. Uh, the biggest thing I take away from this is that uh, you have to remember that in the 70s, due to the timing of... Um, um, this happened in, in every sport but baseball, it seems. And baseball, obviously, was a different breed. But due, due to the timing of the draft compared to the season, there wasn't enough time typically for football players to make it into uh, their – to make their debut in the card set of the year they made their NFL debut. Just not enough time turnaround to make that happen. So uh, this is the, one of those oddball sets where a lot of these guys make their first appearance – on um, cards or stamps or whatnot, uh, actually in their true rookie year. So uh, we're going to go over to the Vintage Football Card Gallery website, which was uh, very helpful uh, with the research that I did for this show. And I'm going to read a little bit of a blurb from them about the 72 Sunoco stamps. Uh, again, there's 624 stamps in the base 1972 Sunoco stamp set 12 offensive players and 12 defensive players for each of the 26 NFL teams. The stamps and nine stamp packets were free with purchase from Sunoco and DX gas stations. Two albums for the stamps, 56 page saver album and 128 page deluxe saver album were available via mail order. So you would have to mail order those bad boys. The saver album was 125 cents, also known as $1 and 25 cents. And the deluxe album Deluxe Saver album was $3.50 or 10 times uh, 10 gallons of gas almost at that point. Uh, each album contained a starter set of 144 stamps, but the 144 stamps were the same in every album. 
uh, individual stamps were also available via mail order for two cents each. In addition to the 624 original stamps, the mail order form contained 82 update stamps. I have that and I will bring that up here. Um, the advert, the mail order advert for the uh, updates. It's up on the YouTube if you're watching. Um, the upstate, update stamps were not available from the gas station, so they are much scarcer than the originals. Uh, and again, we talked about the Trader Wallet, uh, which you could keep your stamps. Uh, it's not uh, the author of this article on Vintage Football Gallery was not sure if they were giveaways or if they were um, sendaways or whether they just came with the um, the booklets when you ordered them. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You could check off. There's a checklist that you could guess. I, I guess you would get that at the gas station and check off what players you wanted uh, to get uh, to, to send away for. Um, pretty pretty cool stuff. So uh, talk about uh, these guys again. I'm going to bring up some, uh, some of these stamps up on the um, YouTube a lot of people love the design of this, and I'll, and we'll get to this when we get over when we get through uh, some of the specs here real quick. Uh, there is uh, the front of these things are two toned, so um, majority of the color on top, and there's a there's a bar across the bottom. But these colors uh, follow the team, the team theme as well. So the 49ers colors are uh, whatever you want to call that that red maroon, and the gold below uh, browns were brown and orange. Cowboys, obviously, blue and silver, and the Packers, green and yellow, etc. So uh, the front of these cards featured a white border, uh, and inside uh, of a oval was a player picture. Um, and these pictures are pretty cool because most of these pictures are, uh, with the exception of four of the original set, most of these pictures are, are all action, game action shots. There's some sideline shots. Uh, some small, you know, small amount of warm-up shots, but for the most part, it's just beautiful photography for the early '70s uh, action, which wasn't really seen in that many football cards up to that point or football sets up to that point. So, these guys did a really uh, kick-butt job uh, with all this stuff. Uh, again, the front features player's name, their position, and uh, actually goes it's their number, their name, their name, then their position, and below that is their team name, uh, city, and uh, team nickname as well. Uh, all portrait, no landscape here. There are no subsets. There's no leader cards. There's no designation for all stars or MVPs or league leaders or anything like that. Um, it's just a straight ahead, beautiful set of cards, uh, kind of before things got complicated again, not cards. I apologize for referring to them as cards, but, uh, just a, a, a really, really neat little, um, set of, trading paraphernalia, I guess. Uh, I've brought up some uh, pictures on the YouTube. Again, Bart Starr is on there. A nice action shot throwing from the 71 season, most likely. Leroy Jordan uh, wearing that uh, cursed, it was believed to be a cursed blue uniform top for the Cowboys. Steve Spurrier is pictured as a punter dash quarterback, and he's pictured in action punting the ball. The ball is in midair, dropping to the foot, hands at his side. He's ready to boot that bad boy. And there's a great shot of Bob McKay of the Cleveland Browns um, sitting covered in mud on the bench, probably at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. Uh, one of the cool things about this set, as you can see from the Leroy Jordan card, or the re I'm going to call them cards, I don't care, but from the card stamps, whatever, uh, he's listed as MLB, middle linebacker, and Bob McKay is listed as RT, right tackle. So these cards were uh, these cards were cool because, uh, again, it, as we heard from Beckett and uh, Football Card Trading Gallery, um, that there was 12 defensive and 12 offensive uh, vintage football card gallery. I'm sorry. 12 defensive and 12 offensive players. So if you go on uh, like trading card database and scroll through, you'll see uh, wide receiver, then left tackle, then left guard, then center, then right guard, then right tackle, then wide receiver, then running back, then quarterback. It lists them all in order for the team. 
Um, on the offensive side, there is there's some shenanigans. Sometimes two quarterbacks are on one team, and there won't be a tight end, or there'll be um, one running back, two quarterbacks, and a tight end. Uh, and then there's a uh, a kicker uh, on the offensive side, and on the defensive side, they do the same thing. They go defensive end, defensive tackle, defensive tackle, defensive end. And in your uh, left linebacker, your right linebacker, your, your middle linebacker, all that stuff, it designates right safety, left safety, right cornerback, left cornerback. So, And then, of course, the punter. So it's pretty wild. Uh, it's pretty thorough. Again, uh, 24 players for each team. So uh, they cover all the offensive positions. And uh, as we find out, and uh, I can kind of let the cat out of the bag right here uh there's a lot of players that this is the only time they ever appear on a trade trading implement at all throughout the career their careers there's players that played into the double figures with teams and never made it onto a tops card uh, but but some of these guys their their sole appearance is um on the sunoco stamps which is pretty cool i think that uh, again it's an all-encompassing set and the update set pretty much filled in some of the blanks both with rookies and and say third wide receivers or, or, or such. So <clears throat> pretty cool stuff there. I think, um, again, there's no stats on any of these things because the backs are just meant to be adhered to the booklets and the booklets have the information inside of them. Apparently, uh, I'm going to read some, uh, some other things here. So, uh, there's 72 hall of famers, uh, depicted on this set, which is pretty cool. So more than 10% of the people on here are hall of famers, NFL hall of famers, uh, some of them made it made them as coaches, obviously, but uh, a lot of them made them as made it as players. Um, and uh, I think that that's impressive for any set to have seventy two Hall of Famers in there. And uh, pretty cool. If you want to find out who that is, I can uh, send you that file, and you can take a look at it yourself. So again, from uh, now from Football Card Gallery, going to read some kind of some nuances to the set. Um, guy uh malcolm snyder from the atlanta falcons was a guard okay and um he returned a kickoff for a touchdown in 1969 it was his only career kickoff return again we're talking about a guard here he uh john williams from the baltimore colts was a guard and the tackle he played 12 seasons for the colts rams but he never appeared on a regular issue card bubba smith uh well, we just find out that Bubba Smith's uh, name is Charles Aaron Smith. So that doesn't have anything to do with this set, but it's pretty cool. Uh, Fred Miller, uh, though he played 10 seasons for the Colts and made the Pro Bowl three times, Miller never appeared on a regular issue football card either. Ted Hendricks, what we're going to find about him is he placed fifth in the um, Heisman Trophy balloting in 1968, which is pretty impressive for a defender known as the Stork. Horst Muehlman, which is one of the great, great football names of all time, uh, played one season for the North American Soccer League's Kansas City Spurs in 1968. Bill Andrews had an 11-year career playing for the Browns, the Chargers, and the Chiefs, and he never appeared on a regular issue football card. Uh, Ernie Kellerman uh, is a error card in this set. Now, Kellerman, apparently, uh, when his when his people went through Ellis Island, they kept the two ends on the end of his name. But uh, the folks at NSI Marketing only put one N on his name on his stamp. So uh, an uncorrected error there, but an error nonetheless. Now, Ron Whidbey played for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, but he was traded to the Packers prior to the 19, 1972 season. Um, so he's depicted as a Cowboy, but he really was a Packer in 72. And he threw two passes for the Packers in 1972 he completed them both for 102 yards and one touchdown again rod whidbey was a punter so uh kudos to ron whidbey steve owens uh with 1035 yards uh he's from the detroit lions he's a running back he is uh apparently he was a heisman trophy winner in 69 i guess uh oj won in 68 maybe but Owens became the Lions' first ever 1,000-yard rusher in 1971, so the 72 stamp is a bit of a victory lap for him. Um, Kermit Alexander was another guy on the move there. He uh, is depicted with the Rams, uh, but he moved on to the Eagles, the mighty Philadelphia Eagles, before the start of the 1972 season. Here's something 
that I'm asking you to sit down before uh, you open your ears. Uh, Fred Cox, who I mentioned in a past episode could uh, barely fit his big head into a kicker's helmet with one bar. Uh, Obviously, he played for the Vikings. Uh, In the early 1970s, Fred Cox invented the Nerf football. So uh, throw that into your next bar trivia match right there, courtesy of uh, yours truly. Uh, Rowan Lakes was a New York Giants tackle. Uh, He did not play in 72. 1971 was his uh, last season. So Rowan Lakes, um, this was his swan song. Tim Rosovich of the Philadelphia Eagles was a defensive end, went to USC, and it is rumored, according to IMDB, that he was Tom Selleck's roommate at USC. Uh, Chuck Allen is another one of those guys from the Steelers, uh, depicted with the Steelers. But again, he went to play for the Eagles in 72. A lot of people were headed to Philadelphia in 72. Uh, Oddly enough, the Keating family was wrapping up their time in Philadelphia in 72 before they moved to the suburbs. So people were moving in, the Keatings were moving out. Um, Mike Bass, finally, of the Washington Redskins, uh, scored the Redskins' only touchdown in Super Bowl VII. He recovered that famous fumble off of uh, Garo Upremium's various body parts uh, in a failed field goal attempt and ran uh, 49 yards for the score. Redskins' only touchdown. So up here I have on the screen the good, which I consider uh, Bart Starr, a nice picture, Leroy Jordan, Steve Spurrier, again, punting and quarterbacking, but punting mostly, and uh, Bob McKay looking like a early 70s football player. Let's go to the bad. Only one bad stamp on here, and it, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up Fair Hooker, wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. Incidentally, Fair Hooker, it's just fun to say, right? Uh Fair Hooker uh, was number 43, and he was a wide receiver. I noticed on a lot of these stamps that uh, the NFL was not as uptight as they would be later on uh, with positions and numbers and all that, John. There's a lot of uh, a lot of players playing. Um, there's a lot of players uh, playing, uh, you know, different positions with weird numbers, and it's kind of cool to see the way it is now as well, kind of like following the college trend, right? So, uh, again, fair hooker, 43 wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. And let's get to the ugly. And I'm only going to mention these four guys because these are the four guys that are um, um, portrait shots, or not portrait shots, but posed shots in the entire set. So out of 624 cards, we have four uh, portrait cards, or or, I'm sorry, four um, posed cards. And it's uh, Pete Richardson, uh, right safety for the Bills. It's uh, Joe... Beauchamp, the right cornerback for the San Diego Chargers, John Henderson, wide receiver for the Vikings, and Gerald Wilson, the punter for the Kansas City Chiefs. And you can clearly see that Gerald Wilson, his number is 44. He's a punter. So that's awesome. Now let's get back to the 70s here. There's a couple things uh, I want to look at. 70s were, were probably the greatest era of face masks in NFL history. Um, Curly Culp has that really cool... Uh, I don't know, man. It looks like like a Mad Max mask. Uh, three big bars, one big nose bar coming down the middle. Um, Bob Tucker from the Giants is a tight end, again, wearing number 30-something-something. Something. What I found interesting, he's wearing that old-school double bar mask, but uh, the Giants, they, put, they decided to throw numbers up on their helmets, I guess, in the 71 season. And the numbers were bigger than their actual NY logo, the classic NY logo on the sides of their helmets which doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, the numbers should be uh, secondary to the the uh, team logo, obviously. Uh, I have Jim Otto, old double zero. He's got his little neck guard on, two zeros on his uh, right sleeve, but he's got that. This guy's a center, and he's got the, the, the quarterback double bar face mask with that little U-shaped, U-shaped nose guard protecting thing that comes down from the center top of his helmet. So, Love that stuff. Um, <clears throat> Leroy Jordan, again, depicted uh, with one of those classic 70s uh, face masks that the running backs wore, defensive uh, players wore, everybody seemed to wear. It just looked like a, it's just like a square. It's like four XL sheets right there. That's all that is. Um, or XL cells, 
from uh, Microsoft. And then if Aaron Brown is the last one, number 87. He's got a uh, kind of a mini face mask with one long bar coming across the nose. So love that stuff. Now, I know that there's uh, there's some freaks out there who collect referee cards. Uh, Edgar Chandler, the middle linebacker from the Buffalo Bills, is depicted right next to a referee. The referee uh, almost making it look like it's his card instead of Edgar Chandler. So if you're one of those freaky deeks that likes to collect cards with referees, you can't go wrong with the Edgar Chandler 1972 Sunoco stamp slash card that smells like gasoline. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the set value here. Um, complete set will run you 75 to $150, according to Beckett OPG. Uh, the commons are 10 to 20 cents. Uh, the double printed ones, 8 to 15 cents. Uh, semi stars, 15 to 30. And stars that are semi stars that are double printed, 13 cents to 25 cents. Let's talk about the top five set stamps in the <clears throat> regular issue set. Uh, the albums go for $15, the deluxe albums. The uh, other album, which is, uh, what the heck is the other album called again? Hold on, everybody. The Saver album. The Saver album goes for uh, up to $10. Um, so your number one stamp, though, is going to be uh, a, a tie between Roger Staubach and Joe Namath. Probably wouldn't expect anything different, right? Uh, they'll run you 4 to $8, depending on condition. Uh, Terry Bradshaw and Johnny Unitas finish finish us off at 6 and $5, respectively, for, uh, for their stamp. So uh, those are... Obviously, uh, probably the four biggest stars of the early 70s. Bradshaw, maybe not so much at that point, but but obviously uh, later on he'd win four Super Bowls. So big deal there. Again, I'm going to bring up the advert. Um, it's essentially a menu you can fill out, send your two cents in per stamp, and get uh, that stuff, get the booklet, all that crap. Uh, update set uh, is only 82 stamps. Uh, but will cost you $125 to $200 for the complete set. The commons are buck twenty-five to three. Semi stars one fifty to four. Now, if you're talking about um, value here, uh, the Cliff Branch stamp is uh, worth upwards to twenty-five dollars. And then there's a bunch of guys uh, such as Bob Asher, Steve DeLong, and Tony McGee and Jim Osborne are running about twenty bucks. The Ahmad Rashad slash Bobby Moore one is a little bit less. I think it's in the fifteen to eighteen dollar range uh for that so um again uh pre-rookie stamps we talked about uh biggies are going to be shell art shell uh jack youngblood cliff harris harold carmichael philadelphia eagle jack ham mel blunt and dan deardorff um so pretty cool stuff so i have in my possession right here uh some stamps that i'm going to open uh Brand new, meaning they're 50 years old. They've never been opened. Um, I've opened one so far just to kind of get a look on the inside to make sure I'm not screwing anything up. So these guys are probably about two inches by maybe six inches, these booklets. So and they have perforated sides. So you rip, and I'm going to rip the Dallas Cowboys one first. Um, pretty cool stuff. It just kind of folds out like a book and away we go. Again, 50 years old, we're, we're doing a big stamp break right now. So that's what it looks like unfolded if you're watching. Uh, what did I get here? I got myself uh, Jan White, Bob Bullet Hayes. It's pretty cool. Royce Berry, Gene Howard, Del Williams, Buck Buchanan, Dave Herman, Ernie Calloway, and uh, Mel Phillips. So I'm going to open up the Eagles one next, see what's inside. Well, I'm going to open up the Eagles last. I'm going to go to the Miami Dolphins one next, see what we have. Pretty fun doing this. It says, it gives you directions to open, bend, and tear along perforation. Thanks for the time. This guy has uh, Mike Phipps, Ike Lassiter, Don Herman, Mike Schnitker, Verlon, Biggs, George Webster, Ron Porter, Jim Kearney, and Clint Jones. Uh, I did open one earlier from the, the Jets one. Uh, this is that right here. If you're a Jets fan, kudos to you for sticking around with that program. Uh, I got Joe Owens, Gary Garrison. Pretty original. It's like naming your kid John. Gary Garrison. 
uh, Glenn Condren, Ralph Neely, Rex Kern, Dick Buckus, uh, Emerson Boozer, Bob Hines, and Frank Nunley. So if you're looking there, uh, we can see on the other side here is Dick Butkus. Um, so that's that. And one more. We're going to open up the Philadelphia Eagles here. Maybe I get one of those top four hits of those big quarterbacks from the 70s. Um, yeah. It's amazing. People are hoping right now that they get a Justin Fields. I'm hoping I get a Johnny Unitas. Uh, so the Eagles have bequeathed me Roger Schultz, uh, Dave Long, Ben Hawk Hawkins, uh, Jethro Pugh, Drew Bowie, John Small, Joe Beauchamp, uh, John Brockington, and Mike Bragg. So uh, I got one of the guys I highlighted there that John, uh, that Joe uh, Beauchamp, one of the one of the post pictures. Uh, but otherwise, I didn't get any of the big hitters. But I'm I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, pretty cool opening something up fifty years. On, I'm not sure whether we did this growing up, whether my parents went to Sunoco or not. Don't know. I was in the back of a station wagon facing backwards and uh, no idea where we're getting our gas. I just know that my mom would get her cigarettes at the golf station, $5 for a carton. Um, I don't know where we bought our gas. So how about that? 72 stamps. Um want to thank, again, our pal Mark Zankovic there, the St. Louis Cardinals diehard. Um, got a little, uh, some uh, public service announcements here, nothing too big, but I just want to uh, remind everybody, just keep following the hobby content creators out there. Uh, I listen to Dr. Jim Beckett's uh, Sports Card Insights. I will watch and listen to Hobby Hotline. Um, Herman does his 3B collection kin does his beans ball card blog uh stuff so uh mike summer's got his thing going on with wax pack hero ray from philly does his thing and uh mike this baseball card life so uh there's so many out there we have to keep going uh chris i hope you keep going on with your all-time sports cards and uh you know there's there's just keep on uh Keep on keeping on with these people because uh, so many people put out good content. And, uh, you know, Bo Thompson, again, uh, one million Cubs. He he does it probably more than all of us uh, on a daily basis, uh, although he's out on vacation right now at spring training. So good for you, Bo. But uh, just get out there on YouTube. Listen to these people. Watch these people. Um, it's it's uh such a wonderful, wonderful uh, resource of information um, and uh, all that stuff. So uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, one more I want to talk about real quick here is our guy, Chris, over there, Stories in Cardboard, another uh, great content creator. So keep going with those folks. There's more to mention. I'll try to get to those um down the road, but, uh, those are some of my favorites that I try to listen to as much as I can. Um, thanks for joining me, um, on our little journey back in time here. Uh, if you have a comment or suggestion again, uh, reach out to me at, uh, that seventies card show at gmail.com. Um, at seventies card on Twitter. And of course, at YouTube, uh, that seventies card show. I appreciate it, everybody. If you're on the podcast, you're listening to Mango Safari. And uh, be safe out there. Have a great week. I'll try to be back soon. Uh, next week, I get to be home for the whole week before I head down to uh, Blacksburg, Virginia to see my favorite Hokie. And um, enjoy your collection and enjoy collecting to all of you folks. Have a great week. Thanks.